Um, so factory re reopened in six months. This was the strangest thing that happened, actually, because nobody believed we could reopen, but we did. And uh, it's difficult, and uh, uh, we had to do first round of layoffs. So as you maybe remember from the beginning of our talk, that we sent home 3,600 people and we took back 1,300. So we basically let uh, more than 2,000 people go at one day, basically. And this was just the beginning <laughs> of uh, everything we had to do there in the factory. That's rough. I couldn't have felt. Hmm? I said that's very rough. I can't imagine that was... Everything was rough. Everything was rough. We had no money. We restarted factory from uh, prepayment from a German distributor. We got money from him. He somehow trusted that we will deliver motorcycles. <laughs> so he paid some money in advance. We used it to restart. It was 40,000 euros. Every bit of new information I get about this company, even though I've worked for you for a <laughs> long time, it's frightening how close it came to never happening, not once, not twice, but like a dozen times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been close. Uh, it wasn't the first time, it wasn't the last one. Um, <clears throat> and it did not feel like it close, really. I, I'm trying to remember, I, I had like zero doubt that we will reopen. Just zero. Okay, so uh, at some point you must have decided that buying out the U.S. distributor and taking over that part was a way to push the company forward. As I mentioned, I was thinking that our main market should be domestic market. Oh, that's right. Uh, it was a mistake. Our customers probably remember that we had uh, the solo model called Wolf. So this was our attempt to get into domestic market with something new and exciting. So we built this bike and it didn't go. And our sales were, I don't know, one hundredth or one tenth of what we needed. This was the biggest project factory undertook before the shutdown. With okay. Wolf. So my one of my partners, uh, he said, guys, there's no way we can sell anything on the domestic market because the people don't have money to pay for our bikes. The amount we need to cover our expenses. So we need to focus on export, on export markets. And of those markets, the biggest one was America. So we started uh, uh, establishing our relationship as distributors, new relationship. Uh, but at one point we uh, realized that it's, uh, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to work when we have independent distributors on especially on main markets uh, because we need straight direct channel of communication with the market mm -hmm. so when we are there uh, and this our distribution hand it has to be 100% focused on one product which is Euro and Euro America wasn't it they were trying to sell some other products. Uh, so, uh, plus, uh, of course, we didn't want to give away distributor, distributor margin. You almost couldn't afford it at that point. We couldn't afford, yes. And our X-Works prices were too low for us to survive. Okay. So th this is how we came to decisions that we need to set up our own distribution company. So between our partners, we decided that I would go to the United States and my other partner went to establish company in Europe. 
it was 2002. So when I came on, it was uh, 2007, and you guys had just introduced, I think, the Brembo front disc brake. Mm. Uh, 2006. No, in 2006, there were tons of changes. Uh, this is when they started using Herzog gears and yeah. some other stuff. These brakes were 2002, I think, much okay. way before this. So you were trying to modernize the bike moving forward to attract more customers, I assume. I realized, <laughs> we realized that the quality is just horrible. So we started uh, trying to improve quality. One would think with disc brakes, from disc brakes, and the big, big project was the introduction of dense housing. This is legend. Yeah. In your award, <laughs> there is a customer whose name is Lee Pape, and he showed me uh, his homemade adapter with dense alternator. And you just decided to implement that? I uh, went to our engineers and told them, guys, what the hell? And they, they implemented it and <laughs> they built the adapter a little bit more, kind of more sophisticated than Leapape did. But it was that dense alternative that he somehow found in some hardware store. I have his alternator in my office. I th I've seen it. <laughs> I think it had a billet aluminum yeah, adapter. Plate. Yeah, plate. Yeah, it wasn't even an adapter. It was just a plate. So you continued to improve the product. Things were moving forward. And then come 2008, 2009, there was a major crisis that everybody was facing. Uh, for us, uh, it started before that. I would say end of 2006. The company was losing money. We were just ble bleeding. Yeah, bleeding. Bleeding. Uh, we're losing million, millions of dollars of cash every year. Fixed expenses as a factory were very high. Uh, prices weren't high enough, and uh, the exchange rates weren't favorable. So we were losing money. So we started taking loans. It wouldn't help. Yeah, and in the end of 2006, early in 2007, uh, we kind of we were close to bankruptcy again, quite frankly. I came to the conclusion that uh, to do very, very radical restructuring of the company, very radical. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, we ran into arguments with my partners at this time. I was fired, actually. By your partners? By my partners. I don't think I've heard this story. Uh, yeah, I was fired a couple of weeks, three weeks. Really? Yeah. We had the board of directors and they voted for firing me. What year was this? I was uh, 2007. That was the year I came on. Mm -hmm. I don't remember hearing anything about this. It's good. Yeah, you, <laughs> you kept it very quiet. I called for a shareholder meeting and... Uh, yeah, instead my partners were fired. Uh, but it was rough. Uh, me and the who supported me, we had um, by less than 1% well, more shares than two of my other partners. Wow. And before that, I actually tried to quit uh, early in 2007 because I figured that uh, I, I won't be able to uh, like peacefully resolve this conflict. So I actually decided that I'm quitting, which I did, but only for two days. And then after two days, you said, screw that. I said, screw that. And then the world financial crisis. And then... Uh, uh, <clears throat> which was officially yeah, so 2008, 2009. For us, it started like one year early than for the rest of the world because the factory was in a terrible shape and uh, we started uh, restructuring, <laughs> like cutting our costs, cutting everything, like everything. Uh, so by that time we already had uh, less than 1,000 people at the factory. 
and this process started, I believe it was June or July of 2007, and by January 2009, we had 150 people in the faction. Wow. We went from 3,600 to about 150 in this period of time. And how many bikes were you producing at that point? Less than... Globally? Less than 1,200. 150 people producing 1,200 bikes. It's a lot. Because before we've been producing 1,200 bikes with 3,600 people. No, that's what I'm saying. 150 people still... That 20 times more people yeah. used to build. Yes. It's still not good. <laughs> it's a hell of an effort. Yes. And uh, somehow we were fortunate and we started doing all this restructuring before like actual crisis hit. Like we had like six months head start, nine months. 